Welcome to the Deep Dive. Now, many of you know us from the HIV RNA Test Guide podcast, helping you navigate testing across the U.S. That's right. And you know how crucial it is to stay updated on HIV research. Absolutely vital. So today, we're doing a deep dive into something pretty exciting, a big international project, $18 million, called OptiFlip. Yeah, OptiFlip. It's all about developing a preventative HIV vaccine. And that funding, that's serious money. It's coming from the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, NIAI. Exactly. NIAD, which is part of the NIH. It really signals how important this search for an effective vaccine still is globally. So our mission today is to really unpack this OptiFlip project. We want to understand, you know, what's their new strategy? What makes it potentially uh, a game changer? And we should definitely talk about Ursa Kais's role. They're a research center in Catalonia, and they're, well, they're leading a key part of this. Ah, yes. Ursa Kaiso. They've got form in this area, haven't they? Already involved in other NIH-funded HIV work. They do. And Christian Brander, he's one of the co-principal investigators there. He actually said something quite telling about this funding. Oh, yeah. What did he say? He said uh, something like, receiving this funding demonstrates that our project continues to move forward. And he stressed how important it is to keep pushing this research, especially, you know, with everything else going on in global health. OK, right. Let's get into the nuts and bolts then. HIV vaccines, they've been notoriously difficult. What's the like the core problem OptiFlip is trying to solve? What's tripped up previous efforts? Well, the big hurdle, and Brander points this out, too, is getting the body to make enough of the right kind of antibodies, specifically uh, neutralizing antibodies. Neutralizing antibodies. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones that actually stop the virus, right? Stop it getting into the CD4 plus T cells. Exactly. They're the key defenders. Yeah. And past vaccine strategies, well, they've often struggled to get the body to produce a strong, broad response of these specific antibodies. It's been tough. So if that's been the big challenge, how is OptiFlip approaching it differently? What's their angle? What's really interesting here is their plan to kind of coordinate two arms of the immune system, antibodies and T cells. Okay. So the idea is to create a vaccine that doesn't just push for those neutralizing antibodies, but also boosts the specific T cells that help B cells. B cells being the antibody factories. Precisely. Boost the T cells that help the B cell factories work more efficiently, make better weapons, basically. And they're focusing on a specific type of T cell, follicular T cells. Why are they so important? Yeah, follicular T cells, they're absolutely critical. They give the B cells the signal, the support they need to um, mature and churn out high quality antibodies. Like quality control and production managers combined. Kind of, yeah. They tell the B cells what kind of antibodies to make and make sure they're really effective. Now, traditionally, the focus was on CD4 plus follicular T cells. Yeah. But that had a problem. Ah, uh, right. Because CD4 plus T cells, that's what HIV targets and infects. Exactly. So trying to boost those cells for a vaccine could actually sort of give the virus more targets, maybe even help create those hidden reservoirs. You got it. Mm -hmm. It was a real catch-22, reinforcing the very thing the virus attacks. Mm. But this is where it gets really exciting. Researchers at Ursa Kaitsa, uh, Alex Silvera was key here, they found something else. And what did they find? They identified CD8 plus follicular T cells. And the amazing thing is, these CD8 plus cells, they seem to do the same job helping the B cells make antibodies but HIV doesn't infect them. Wait, really? So they help antibody production, but aren't vulnerable to HIV? That's the discovery. As Olvera put it, this opens new opportunities for developing safer and more effective HIV strategies. It's potentially a way around that old problem. Wow, okay. That does sound like a major shift. So how does OptiFlip plan to use these CD8 plus follicular T cells? How do they aim to, you know, make them work better for the vaccine? Well, one specific thing they're looking into is using IL-10 inhibitors. IL-10 inhibitors. What does that mean? Okay, so IL-10 is a molecule in our body that normally acts like a break on the immune system. It stops it going overboard. Oh, which is usually good, right? Prevents autoimmune issues. Exactly. But in the context of a vaccine, maybe you want to ease off that break just temporarily. So the idea is... If you inhibit IL-10 briefly, you might get a stronger activation of both T cells, including those helpful CD8 plus follicular T cells and the B cells. Ah, so release the breaks to get a more powerful response to the vaccine itself. That's the hypothesis they're testing, a way to potentially amplify the desired immune reaction. Clever. Now, I also heard they're focusing on a very specific part of the virus, not the whole envelope, but the fusion peptide. Yes, that's another key part of their strategy. Instead of, say, targeting the entire outer coat of the virus, 
they're zooming in on this fusion peptide. And why that specific bit? Christina Pelagero Ursikaisa explained this. The fusion peptide is like the crucial piece of machinery HIV uses to actually merge with and enter our cells. It's essential for infection. A key that unlocks the cell door, almost. A good analogy, yeah. And what's interesting is apparently this specific region hasn't been explored that much as a main target for vaccines before. Really? It sounds so critical. Yeah, she described it as largely unexplored. So, by focusing antibodies specifically against this vital entry mechanism, they hope to block infection right at that critical step, a very targeted attack. Okay, so a different target and boosting a safer type of helper cell. And I think they're also learning from certain people living with HIV. That's right. They're studying samples from people called elite neutralizers. Elite neutralizers? What makes them elite? These are individuals who, quite remarkably, naturally develop really powerful and broadly effective neutralizing antibodies very early on after getting infected. Their immune systems just do it really well, spontaneously. Wow. So the project is looking at how they do that. Exactly. They're recruiting these individuals in Spain and also South Africa. Oh, interesting. Why both? Well, that allows them to study diverse immune responses and also look at responses against different HIV variants, which is really important. The hope is to figure out what makes their immune system so successful and see if those factors can be mimicked with a vaccine. Learning from nature's successes. That makes a lot of sense. So once they have all this data from the cell studies, the IL-10 work, the elite neutralizers, what's the plan? Straight to human trials. Not quite yet. The next big step is preclinical validation. So the most promising vaccine ideas that come out of this phase will be tested in animal models first. Right, standard procedure. To check for safety and crucially, to see if the strategies actually work to prevent infection in a living system before trying in humans. Precisely, it's a vital checkpoint. And this sounds like a massive undertaking. You mentioned Ursa Kaixa, but it's an international effort, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. OptiFlip is genuinely global. Hmm. You've got Christian Brander at Ursa Kaixa, of course, but also Dennis Hardigan O'Connor and Ellen Sparger at UC Davis in California. Okay. Penny Moore at the University of Witwatersrand in South Africa, linking back to those elite neutralizer studies. Right. And Bryce Chakarian at the University of New Mexico. It's a real powerhouse collaboration. Bringing together all that different expertise must be a huge advantage. Definitely. Tackling something as complex as an HIV vaccine, you really need that mix of perspectives, skills, and resources from around the world. It really underscores the scale of the challenge, but also the commitment. Thinking bigger picture now, we have pre-OP, we have effective treatments. Why is a preventive vaccine still considered so, so important? That's a great question, and Christian Brander actually addressed this directly too. He pointed out that even with things like pre-IP, sticking to the regimen, adherence, can be a real challenge for people. Yeah, daily pills aren't easy for everyone. Right, and then there are ongoing worries about global access to treatment, making sure everyone who needs it can actually get it consistently. So Brander argues, and many agree, that a preventative vaccine will be the only accessible and sustainable solution to combat HIV in the long run. A one and done or few shot solution that provides long-term protection. That would be huge, especially in places with fewer resources. Exactly. It bypasses issues of daily adherence and potentially complex supply chains for medication. A vaccine could offer broad, scalable protection in a way current tools might struggle to achieve globally. It really could be the key to ending the epidemic. Okay, so wrapping this up, OptiFlip is really pushing the boundaries. They're focusing on these safer CD8 plus follicular T cells, looking at maybe boosting the immune response with IL-10 inhibitors and going after this novel target, the fusion peptide. Precisely. They're challenging some of the old ways of thinking about HIV vaccine development. It's about finding new pathways, safer pathways, potentially more effective ones. And it's all happening through this major international collaboration, pooling brain power to find a solution that hopefully can work for everyone, everywhere. That's the goal. It's really inspiring stuff. It really is. It makes you think, though. What would a truly globally accessible HIV prevention strategy look like? Beyond the science, what are the hurdles to getting something like a successful vaccine out there to everyone who needs it? That's the critical next question, isn't it? A breakthrough like the one OptiFlip is aiming for would be incredible, but ensuring it reaches everyone, that's another huge challenge. Something definitely worth pondering. Mm -hmm.